Alpine's struggles have continued in Imola as well, which has prompted very aggressive responses from Gasly in terms of drivers' preferences, a deal that the team has reportedly not respected in Imola. But with them being way off from where they're supposed to fight with both of its cars and with both of its drivers being out of contract at the end of 2025, it's very likely that Alpine will be looking at a driver that would be a lot more motivated to prove himself in the sport for a second time and receive a chance to drive after an unfair treatment back in 2022. With this in mind, could we see the return of a young German driver in the sport? And more importantly, is he the spark of motivation that the Enstone based squad is missing? It goes without saying that one of the biggest disappointments in Formula One is Alpine, and their downfall did not stop in Imola either. But the bitter pill to swallow is the fact that the French squad lost some very valuable pieces at the beginning of the year, starting with the technical director Matt Harmon and the head of aerodynamics Dirk de Beer. To top that off, Pat Fry, who was the chief technical officer of the team, left them later in 2023 following the firing of Laurent Rossi, as well as the long-serving sporting director Alan Permain. While many believe that the 2023 events would enable a clean and fresh start in 2024, it actually turned out to be exactly the opposite, with the latest race proving that the fire between its teammates is still in full mode. After Ocon's one-point performance in Miami that was celebrated as if they'd just won the championship, the all-French squad is back to zero with their car, even though it reached the weight limit that they've been struggling to reach in the past couple of months. Regardless, the sparks between Ocon and Gasly have been reunited after Gasly sent some angry messages towards his team engineer when it comes to the preferences that the team has towards both of them. Considering the fact that he and Ocon are not the best of friends, a very small spark could ignite the old rivalry between them which would prompt one of the French drivers to be looking for a seat elsewhere a scenario that is helped by the current form of Alpine a very interesting situation transpired during FP3 where Gasly missed out on the opportunity to push for a fast lap but his teammate was able to do so by being sent out earlier speaking to his engineer Gasly said that's f shit guys very badly managed. I don't understand why we are always the same in this situation. Although his engineer explained that everyone struggled to drive a good lap due to the traffic jam they found themselves in, Gasly has pointed a direct shot towards his teammate, adding, yeah, everyone except Esteban, except Esteban. It's always the same. I thought I have the priority this weekend. I don't get it. This is extremely important because even though Alpine believes they had what it takes to make this duo work wonders with each other, it seems like the bad position that the team has found itself in after the early testing in 2024 goes to show otherwise. The key departures from high personnel in just a matter of weeks have started the process of rebuilding and now it seems like apart from the engineers and the work they're doing behind closed doors, a change in the driver's scenario could come as well. The team principal of Alpine, Bruno Famine, has opened up about the opportunities that the team has for 2025, stating that they will be monitoring Mick Schumacher, their current WEC driver, much closer than ever in order to evaluate him for the seat next season. Esteban Ocon has been closely related to Audi and even the Frenchman is not so sure when it comes to remaining in Alpine. When talking about the potential deal between Alpine and Mick Schumacher, Famine went on to say, he is one of the possibilities that is for sure, like many others, but Mick is currently doing an incredible job in our endurance program. What is very impressive is his mindset. Of course, he is very fast, but I think everybody knows that. It's not always useful to have a very good lap time because you have the balance of performance on top. You have to be a bit careful with the performance. Mick, from the very first minute, has been very, very cooperative and really helpful for his teammates. This definitely brings a different narrative when it comes to at least one of the Alpine seats because there are a lot of factors that need to be considered and all of them go in mixed direction. The treatment he received in Haas is definitely one of the most controversial things in the sport to this day, with many believing that if he was given a proper chance in 2023, he would have gotten the team back to the midfield, labelling the problem to be in Steiner and not Gene Haas for poor management skills. Be that as it may, Alpine is now more or less in the same situation where Haas found themselves in 2022, barely fighting for points, which is a massive drop-off considering they were in the midfield just a couple of years ago.
And the disappointment is seen on the driver's faces and their statements as well. If you were to look at what Esteban Ocon has been stating a couple of years ago, you'd be able to touch the enthusiasm in his voice when it comes to winning races with Alpine and standing on the podium in a more regular manner. From that, the Frenchman has gone on to be related to the Audi seat and potentially even Mercedes as well, because many tend to forget that he is their protégé after all and is their product at the end of the day. When talking about his future from 2025 onwards, which is uncertain to this day, Esteban Esteban Ocon went on to say, it's an important year in my career and I want to do the best I can. I don't want any regrets at the end of the year and there is going to be a lot of work on and outside the track. There are going to be chats with the team because I am in the last year of my contract and they are now a lot more in my favour than when we negotiated back in 2019. I am a race winner and a podium finish. We have a lot of arguments in my favour. However, the favour might not be returned from Alpine considering the fact that in the desperate situation they've found themselves in it would only be logical for them to cut the losses and see what suits them the best as all things stand neither Ocon nor Gasly want to be a part of the team especially Gasly who left Alpha Tauri now racing bulls to fight for race wins and podiums and now he can't even get out of Q1 in a regular manner and is yet to score a point for the team after seven venues in 2024 that would prompt a lot of anger in the driver who managed to win a race in 2020 with Alpha Tauri and was one of the best qualifying drivers in one of the worst cars on the grid, constantly putting it on the third row somewhere between P5 and P10. What this goes to show is that with the lost motivation of Gasly and the desperation point at which Ocon finds himself in trying to secure a better future for himself, Mick Schumacher might not be the worst option for Alpine after all. He is still young, he has knowledge about Alpine by driving in their WEC programme and quite frankly he's looking for a way in the sport. In Alpine, the pressure might be reduced due to the fact that they are in a terrible position and the fault is not in the driver's performance but in the car's behaviour, meaning that he'll get some hefty time when it comes to getting to know the car. And what that would prompt at the end is a potential great environment to work in. Yep, Alpine have lost a solid number of great engineers, but then again, the market is open and they could be luring some interesting names that might be invested in the process of returning the team to the midfield. Apart from Mick Schumacher, it looks like a great emphasis will be put on Jack Doan as well, who raced in F2 last year and is their academy driver as well, because from what can be understood from the chatter around the grid, they're looking to rebuild the team with the proper driver lineup who would be more than fitting to the situation the French squad has found itself in. With all this in mind, do you think that Mick could end up in Alpine from 2025 onwards? And more importantly, do you think that he would be the right fit for the team? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And once you do that, make sure to check out the video that's appearing on your screen right now.